Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening thanking you for the blessings you bestow upon us as a city. We ask you to continue to bless the residents of our city, especially those persons who have absolutely nothing and from day to day struggle to try to make ends meet. We're getting ready to embark on, embark on the cold weather. We ask that you give the homeless members of our community comfort and the permanent shelter that they may one day call home. We ask you to give us the ability to do this job in a fair and just manner. These are all the best we ask in thy name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Burford? Here. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame. Here. The motion is to exclude Dr. Webley, please. Mr. Burford. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. The motion is uh, to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Burford. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Uh, aye. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for coming. We want to welcome you to the Norfolk City. Council Chambers, uh, the process for the meeting which we will follow tonight is we have a couple of important ceremonial matters which we'll take up first and then we'll move directly to um, there's the first item is the invitation to bid and we'll talk through that in just a second but that's the first thing we'll take up then we'll move to the public hearings there are three there, there we, we then have a consent agenda um, there are six items on the consent agenda if the council wishes it can vote in one vote on all the six uh, items. We will then uh, move to the, re to the regular agenda. We have a number of items there. There are 22. We'll vote on all of these matters in just the way they are uh, numbered on the printed docket. And we'll go right down the line. Uh, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council at the close of the meeting on a non-agenda item, that's something that's not on tonight's docket, you'll be given that opportunity, and a couple of you have elected to do that, and we'll be glad to hear from you. Excuse me. Uh, the first ceremonial we have is our Veterans Day, annual Veterans Day proclamation, and we are glad to have our friends here to represent the veterans community. Would you like to, to come to the podium, please? I know you've got a camera out there, and if you'll indulge me, I will read the proclamation. This is a uh, proclamation that's been signed by uh, both the mayor of Chesapeake, the mayor, myself as the mayor of Norfolk, mayor of Portsmouth, and, uh, and uh, Mayor Sessoms from Virginia Beach. And the proclamation reads, whereas it is the duty of every American to support and uphold the ideals and principles upon which our nation was founded, and whereas Americans have unselfishly and consistently answered the call to defend the nation's ideals from history's battle at Lexington during the Revolutionary War to the recent distant conflicts of Iraq and Afghanistan. And whereas on this day we pause to remember and commemorate all American men and women who have faithfully served in the uniformed services of the United States of America, whereas we especially recognize the Marine Corps veterans, including those of World War I and II, the Korean War, the Vietnam the Vietnam War, numerous crises and conflicts of the Cold War, and the global war against terrorism. Whereas the members of the Marine Corps League have maintained the honor, integrity, and supremacy of our country and hold supreme allegiance to the United States of America and fidelity to its constitution and laws. And whereas members of the Marine Corps Legion join together in camaraderie and fellowship for the purpose of preserving their traditions and promoting the interests of the United States Marine Corps, banding together those who are now serving in the United States Marine Corps and those who have been honorably, honorably discharged from that service, that they may effectively promote the ideals of American freedom and democracy, voluntarily aiding and rendering assistance to all Marines, FMF Corpsmen and former Marines, <coughs> FMF, FMF Corpsmen and to their widows and orphans, and to perpetuate the history of the United States Marine Corps and by fitting acts to observe the anniversaries of historical occasions of particular interest to Marines, Whereas we, the mayors of the cities of Chesapeake and Norfolk and Portsmouth and Virginia Beach, do proclaim November 11, 2012 as Veterans Day. And now, therefore, we observe on Monday, November 12, 2012, in our cities and celebrate that our citizens, businesses, and organizations 
demonstrate true appreciation, admiration, and respect for all veterans who have served with our great nation, that the Hampton Roads Council of Veterans Organizations, in association with the Marine Corps League, sponsor a parade and patriotic observances honoring Americans who have served and sacrificed for their country. And in witness thereof, we have set our hands and caused the seals of our great Virginia cities of Chesapeake, Norfolk, Portsmouth, and Virginia Beach to be affixed here too and assigned by all four of us, thank goodness. <laughs> thank you, guys. We appreciate you coming down. And um, we have this. I know you've got a copy as well. Sure. Sure. Would you like me to come down for the, we can all come down for the photograph or, sure, sure. you know? Okay. You want to <coughs> Great. You guys want to come behind this? Yeah. How are you doing? Thank you all for coming down. Okay. Okay. He's doing great. Thank you very much. They're all doing good. We're almost lined up by height. There we go. Jane, I knew you're coming down here. There would someday. <laughs> we, 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 we were going to have get some new time. Thank you. Time. Thank you. Hey, Over time. Guys, that. Thank you. We really, really enjoy doing this. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. Very, very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good, good piece of that. You would take that as well. Okay. Thank you all. We, we. He's Tom's doing great. Yeah, thank you for asking him. Thank asking him. Thanks very much. Appreciate all your service. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you're doing good to see you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Great. Well, thank you all again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It was nice of you all to come down. Appreciate it. Thank you for reminding us of your service. Okay, now, Mr. Duke. Frank, are you going to come up and receive a, uh, this proclamation? Okay. Member, I got all Thanks, food partiers in George. Board. This is for Community Planning Month. It reads: Whereas change is constant, affecting all neighborhoods and areas in Norfolk, and community planning and comprehensive plans can help manage this change in a way that provides better choices for how people work, live, and play. Whereas, whereas community planning provides all residents a chance to be involved in making choices that determine the future of their neighborhoods and neighbors building neighborhoods. A new city initiative recognizes the importance of residents working together with the city to plan for the neighborhoods. Whereas the month of October is designated as National Community Planning Month throughout the United States of America and its territories. Whereas the celebration of National Community Planning Month gives the citizens of Norfolk the opportunity to publicly recognize the participation and dedication of the current and past members of the City Planning Commission and other citizen planners who serve on area planning advisory committees, historic preservation and design review committees, and other boards and commissions throughout Norfolk who contribute their time and <coughs> expertise to the improvement of our city. And whereas we also recognize the valuable contributions made by professional community planners serving the city and extend thanks and appreciation to them for their commitment to public service by these professionals. And now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, to hereby proclaim the month of October as Community Planning Month in the City of Norfolk in conjunction with the celebration of National Community Planning Month given under my hand this ninth day of October 2010. And I've signed it in Frank here. <clears throat> Frank, you know, we kid with you a lot, but we really respect all the good work that you do for Thank us you very and, much. and your department as well. Thank Thanks you. very much. And we'd be glad to hear from you tonight. Uh, Mr. Mayor George and I would like to thank you for this proclamation, but we couldn't do what we do without the support of the many citizen planners throughout our city. Uh, I'm sure we weren't able to get some of them to join us, but, but uh, I do need to express my own appreciation for everything that they do, dedicating right. their time to make Norfolk the better place that it is and the even better place that it's going to be in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, George. Thank Appreciate you. it. Okay, now we will move to the regular portion of our agenda. And the first item on, on the agenda is the city clerk will, uh, uh, will read. Yes, sir. Um, this is an invitation to bid scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on October 9, 2012 to accept bids for a long-term parking agreement 
for the benefit of the tenants <coughs> for the benefit of the tenants of the Wainwright building located at 220 West Butte Street. All right. Uh, how many bids have been received? Uh, we've received one bid, Mr. President. Have you? Re uh, will you read the bid and mark it for identification? The bid is uh, WBG Financial Investment and Capital LLC, offering to lease up to 126 parking spaces in the York Street Garage for an initial term of 25 years at the rate established from time to time by the City Council for reserve residential parking in accordance with the terms and conditions set forth in the term sheet attached to the proposed ordinance. I've marked it for identification as WBG bid 102312. Okay. Are there any additional bids offered this evening? There are no bi additional bids. I declare the bidding closed. Okay. Is there any men member of the public who wishes to be heard on this matter? If there's no member of the public who wishes to be heard, I declare the public hearing closed. Is there a recommendation from city staff regarding the bid received from WBG Financial Investment and Capital, LLC? City staff recommends that the bid by WBC Financial Investment and Capital, LLC, be accepted and the parking agreement awarded to WBG Financial Investment and Capital, LLC. All right. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Would you read the proposed ordinance, please? I have an ordinance accepting the bid submitted by WBG Financial Investment and Capital, LLC, for a long-term garage parking agreement with an initial term of 25 years for the benefit of tenants of the Wainwright Building. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Well, if I could. Sure. Um, Bernard, uh, as you may recall, uh, and I don't know if anything that my uh, um, lien on the property at, at, at the point that the previous owners uh, had, uh, we ended up filing suit against them uh, before this new ownership group. Uh, I don't know if it's clear for me to be allowed to vote on this since I had a lien upon this property at one time. You clearly um, can vote on this. That doesn't present to you a conflict. And you, you should vote. The lien has been extinguished, but I did have a suit against the previous owners. I did have a lien upon it, uh, and therefore that's why I wanted to make sure I was clear on that. Right, and that's clearly not a conflict under the Act. But thank you for declaring that. That's good. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams, <clears throat> Mr. Wynn, Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. All right, thank you very much. Okay, public hearing one, please. Public hearing one scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on October 9, 2012, for comments on the conveyance of a gym lot to Ernesto J. and Philomena Viado on property located on the south, at south side of Lansdale Road, Landale Road. And Mr. Viado, I hope I said that right, is here to answer questions if, if there are any. Thank you. Are there any questions? Questions. All right, call the roll. I have an Thank ordinance you. authorizing the conveyance to Ernesto J. Vialdo and Filomena v. M. Viado of certain parcel of property acquired by the city pursuant to section 58.1-3970.1 of the Code of Virginia and approving the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, public hearing two, please. Public hearing two scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on October 9, 2012, to hear comments on a lease agreement which permits the Chesterfield Community Development Corporation occupancy and use of the ground floor of a city building located at 2715 Stanhope Avenue. Um, there are no members of the public who have signed up to address the council on this matter, so if there are no questions, you can call the roll, please. I have an ordinance approving a lease agreement with Chesterfield Community <coughs> Development Corporation for the first floor of the property known as Stanhope House at 2719 through 2721 Stanhope Avenue in the City of Norfolk, granting Chesterfield Community Development Corporation an amount up to $1,500 in appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. The consent agenda, there are six matters here. Would any member of the council like to have either one, any of these matters considered separately? Okay, call the roll, please. Approve the consent agenda, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. <coughs> Frame? Aye. Um, R1. R1 is an ordinance accepting with appreciation the donation of a motorcycle valued at $6,000 equipped with a GPS tracking system and remote control immobilizer valued at $3,838.35 and $1,500 for operational repair work from the National Insurance Crime Bureau to the city to support the police. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. 
Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Penn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2? Mr. President, uh, this matter um, of a lease agreement needs to have a public hearing, so the motion would be tonight to withdraw this and then schedule it for a public hearing to a subsequent date. Okay. All right. Then we will uh, vote on the motion. The motion is to withdraw. Okay. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3? An ordinance authorizing the Director of Finance to credit various accounts of the Department of Utilities in the total amount of $1,144,927.74 so as to reflect uncollectible balances for fiscal year 2009. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4? An ordinance accepting with appreciation the equipment donation of one mass casualty evacuation transport unit valued at $50,000 to the city's Department of Fire Rescue from the Hampton Roads Metropolitan Medical Response System established by the Hampton Roads Planning Council to provide transportation for mass casualty events, evacuation transport, responder rehabilitation, mass fatalities, and temporary shelter for displaced residents during emergency operations. <coughs> Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance to repeal one subsection of Section 25-654 and to amend and reopen <coughs> Sections 25-651, 654, and 656 of the Norfolk City Code so as to add two new U-turn prohibitions, 14 new stop intersections, and one truck over one and one-half ton prohibitions. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6? An, or an ordinance authorizing the acquisition of a perpetual right-of-way easement and a temporary construction easement from Calvin Leroy King over certain property located at 3022 Cape Henry Avenue, North Virginia, and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of $300 from funds heretofore appropriated for the purchase of the easements. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. <coughs> Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7 and 7 to 8, please. R7 is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit greater building height on property located at 221 West Butte Street. And by a 7 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends uh, the request be granted. And um, Rick Hen is here for the proponent, if anyone has any questions. Good to see you, Mr. Hen. Okay, call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 7A. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit off-lot parking on property located at 215 York Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8? An ordinance granting a special exception to permit a change from one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use on property located at 617 uh, Colonial Street. And Kelsey, is it McNair? Here. What's that? I'm sorry. The answer is this Colonial is... Colonial Avenue. This guy said, class, said Colonial, Colonial Avenue. Colonial Avenue. It's street. It's here to answer any questions if we have any. We're good? Okay. Call the roll, please. Um, the Planning Commission also recommended approval on a 7-0 vote. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R9? An ordinance granting a special exception to permit a change from one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use on property located at 509 Bosuvane Avenue by 7-0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. And Susan Bradley is here. Ms. Bradley, this, there you go. To answer questions if we have any. All right, call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. R-10. Um, An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a tattoo parlor and tattoo school on property located at 1130 Bosvane Avenue. By 7-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. And Athenia Karn and Sean Karn are here to answer questions. Back here if we have any. Okay. Call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? 
I usually don't vote for tattoo parlors, but I will tonight. I vote aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. We are, are 11. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a commercial drive through facility on property located at 1600 Monticello Avenue. By 5-2 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R12. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an eating and drinking establishment on property located at 4231 East Little Creek Road, Suite A. By 6-1 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? <clears throat> Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R13. An ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment on property located at 200 East Plume Street. By 5-0 vote with two abstentions, Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Uh, Mr. Protegiro? Well, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, Frank? The question I have deals with, uh, and I don't know if this is something you've looked into or if it's required on the owner to look into, but we're being asked, this, this building was formerly a bank. <clears throat> it was built as a bank, um, and that being said, the roof when the bank was built, I assume, was never contemplated to have parties on its uh, rooftop, which tells me that uh, when roofs are constructed, they're constructed with the idea that it's going to be, uh, you're going to have uh, HVAC devices and you'll have uh, perhaps other devices on a roof to support a bank building structurally. What bothers me here is, as I've looked through this, I can't see where structurally this roof is meant to have 48 people plus chairs plus whatever else goes on it and perhaps the liability goes with the owner and the land uh, and the tenant but I think that as a city the responsibility then may come back to us even if it's a moral responsibility can you tell me if that's been investigated that this roof can support this type of activity if it's even been examined by engineers or architects? It has been examined by the city's Bureau of Building Safety that reports to me they review all the plans for any eating and drinking establishment before it ever goes to the Planning Commission to ensure that the building will meet all code requirements <coughs> with the distribution of people that are proposed. It's also reviewed uh, for fire code issues for that and you'll note with this particular application with the increase in seating they are losing capacity I know and that's that is the issues with with being able to ensure safety in the building well, and I ensure the safety in the building I understand that but let's say we have 48 people up there on a structure that was built for Heritage Bank uh, and their headquarters that they probably never went up there except to repair an air conditioned unit <laughs> does that tell me that I'm comfortable to vote yes because I understand this building is structurally capable of withstanding people on the roof. If you can't tell me, then you just can't tell me. I, mean, I, I don't know what I could tell you to make you more comfortable have with we, this. Have we structurally examined the building that it tells us it can handle people on the roof and that it is able to handle those capacities? It has been examined to ensure that there is the capacity in the building to support that number on the roof, yes, sir. And that it won't collapse? Based on the structural information that we have reviewed, it, it should be fine. Okay. Thank you. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. <clears throat> um, R14? An ordinance requesting the Virginia Department of Transportation to establish projects for the Orange Avenue Street Improvements, Killam Avenue Pedestrian and Bicycle Improvements, Military Highway Feeder Road Pedestrian Improvements, Algonquin Bridge Improvements, Meadowbrook Bridge Improvements, <laughs> approving an agreement <coughs> with the Department of Transportation and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the total sum of $5,200,000 subject to and in accordance with the terms and conditions of the aforesaid agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Oh, Mr. Mr. Jones? Uh, I noticed that we have a, a lot of um, projects going on around the city, which is good. Have we exhausted all of the stimulus money from the Obama administration? Is any of this part of it or what? Um, 
Councilman Riddick, I'd have to get back with you with okay. the, um, the first piece, but the uh, second piece, this is really a reimbursement that we started maybe last fall. Okay. And there are certain steps, and this is the concluding step to get the 50-50 share. Okay, great. Okay, well, that. Thank you. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R15. An ordinance approving an increase in the estimated total project cost of the Kimball Terrace Culvert Improvement Project to $1,200,000 and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the additional sum of $700,000 from the Virginia Department of Transportation Revenue Sharing Program funds. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfoot? Aye. Mr. Protegiri? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R16. A resolution supporting the street improvement project for the Indian River Road Pescara Creek Culvert Improvements Project and requesting funding for such project in the amount of $200,000 through the FY 2014 Virginia Department of Transportation Revenue Sharing Program. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiri? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R17. <clears throat> A resolution supporting the street improvement project for the Spotico Creek at Indian River Road Culvert Improvements Project and requesting funding for such project in the amount of $200,000 through the FY 2014 Department of Transportation Revenue Sharing Program. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiri? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R18. A resolution supporting the street improvement project for the 21st Street Llewellyn Avenue Traffic Signal Improvements Project and requesting funding for such project in the amount of $200,000 through the FY 2014 Department of Transportation Revenue Sharing Program. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R19. A resolution supporting the street improvement project for the Westminster Avenue Repair and Overlay Project and requesting funding for such project in the amount of $350,000 through the Revenue Sharing Program. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiri? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R20. A resolution affirming the site selection by the city manager for a bus transfer. For the the second. Uh, Philip Gillette? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, Philip Gillette. Um, I reside at 1205 Westover Avenue, apartment A5, Norfolk, 23507. <clears throat> the views I express tonight are solely my own. I enthusiastically support the location of the bus transfer station at downtown Plaza. The current Cedar Grove station is a terrible place. It is not ADA compliant, nor does it have bathrooms. As HRT President Harrell stated, Cedar Grove is a place no one would choose to go to. If Norfolk wishes to increase the number of bus riders of choice, it should move the station out of Cedar Grove as soon as possible. On the other hand, the downtown plaza meets all the major criteria that Norfolk has stated is necessary for a bus transfer station. Furthermore, three possible drawbacks <clears throat> of this site are fixable. Number one, the posting of police at Wood Street at peak congestion times would deal with additional traffic caused by buses entering and leaving St. Paul's Boulevard. Two, the additional number of pedestrians crossing Hampton Boulevard can be addressed by measures like fencing and or signalized crosswalk. Three, HRT is pursuing practices that reduce the noise and fumes at transfer stations through the purchase of clean diesel and hybrid electric buses. <clears throat> Finally, let us consider <clears throat> how a pos possible bus rider increase due to locating the bus transfer station at, Cedar, at uh, downtown Plaza uh, would come about. Presently, Cedar Grove averages 6,500 weekday passengers 
it is probable that this number will grow because people <coughs> could now go downtown without taking an extra bus. The number of bus riders might quickly rise to 7,000 or 7,500 riders per day or even higher. Now, while these figures are presently unsupported, we could ask the city to provide data-based projections. At least three positives would flow from an increase in bus riders of choice. First, more people would be able to shop and do business downtown. Second, so fare revenues essential to support future transit operations will increase. And third, some people will decide to leave their automobiles at home and reducing tra tra traffic congestion uh, and fumes and noise. For these reasons, the downtown plaza is the kind of investment Norfolk should make. Thank you. Thank you. Judith Brown. Good evening. I'm Judith Brown. I live at 431 New Hampshire Avenue, Norfolk, 23508. I'm a public transit rider. I came here today by bus. I live in Colonial Place, which is only three miles away from where we sit. But every time I come downtown, I have to change buses at Cedar Grove Transit Center. At Cedar Grove, every weekday, over 6,000 of us spend extra time changing buses just to get to our downtown, to work or to shop or to eat or to attend a concert. Please put the new downtown transit center downtown. I've studied carefully on paper and on foot all of the sites considered by Norfolk and by the HRT staff. Only the downtown plaza site will meet the needs of bus drivers. Bus, excuse me, bus riders. If you select a bus transfer site outside of downtown Norfolk, that would add to our travel. <clears throat> Please try to think like us, bus riders who want to come downtown. Try to think like the new bus riders and choice riders. You can be sure that the farther a transfer site is from the downtown area, the more it will discourage them from trying public transit at all. Finally, I'm disappointed that some of you in your remarks seem to be stuck in current downtown traffic. You envision that our downtown traffic jams will continue for years and years. But we should all be dreaming of the day when traffic is less and the city can perhaps sell some of its parking garages for other uses because not enough people will need to park. Please decide and decide tonight for the downtown plaza transfer site. Thousands more people will happily and rapidly be riding public transit right into downtown Norfolk. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Austin. Good evening. My name is Joe Austin, 534 Garen Avenue. Uh, Mr. Jones, Mr. Pisco. I am 7.5 billion percent in favor of the downtown um, bus station. Cedar Grove is despicable. I was there Saturday. Some guy was selling socks. One guy was drunk, et cetera, et cetera. As Mr. Burbage said last week, if you put that station there and get some comments around it, people will come. Light rail is coming. I applaud the next um, item. Um, um, you all have the power to make this happen. Yes. Um, St. Paul's is busy, yes, but there was no mention of that two years ago. Now it's a traffic problem. I disagree. Love you dearly, but disagree. Um, um, as a famous person who you all know said, I'm going to paraphrase, HRT bus riders are people too. So um, they deserve the best. Last thing, there's a bus stage stop on, uh, behind the Bank of America that's gone. I think it went down behind an uh, op sale. Put that back, please. Um, those folks get off of work. It's raining. There are people, too. So uh, I understand the concerns of people across the street and all this stuff, but um, I'm speaking for the people who are at the bus stop right now, and they deserve the best. 
as you give um, serious consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I put that on the table today, Joe, so they have it. Shira Knight. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Shira Knight. I live at 831 Banker Road, Part 103. I'm also speaking concerned about City Road, about moving it down to downtown Plaza by Wood Street. And I also would like to speak highly about several individuals down City Road. It's kind of um, messed up that senior citizens are scared to come down there. And just not City Road, it's also MT Butts. People be sitting there, they're in the bus stops, smoking, shooting crab, shooting CeeLo, drinking beer, urinating. And it's also as a sign that say HRT property. And they also have those signs down there at uh, City Grove. And I would love for y'all to enforce the law down there with a point where the sign say HRT property. If you're not using the bus, it's going to be trespassed and arrest. That would really will push the ever to people are scared to come down there to even catch the bus. And I mean, it's, it's really pathetic. It's not fair. They pay their taxes like y'all do, and we do too. And I speak, I speak to the point where I sit down there mainly like um, many years before City Grove even came and existed. The way it is now, I mean, it, it's, I look at um, Hampton, Hampton bus lineup out there. Hampton bus lineup, they have a building where the, the police officers and security guards are right there. And if someone is not catching the bus, even if they got a bus pass, they still will tell them if they're not catching, they have to leave and stop lottery and panhandling. Even Newport News, they have a building for the, for the um, policemen and officers, security guards. And the bus the place is clean, it's quiet. <clears throat> I have seen some time where if it get too cold, then City Grove would be clear for that whole night. Very seldom officers, it take about like 10 or 20 <coughs> minutes before they come to help people out there. And I really would appreciate, you know, say I really, with God, with God's grace and guidance. And I know y'all love the Lord. Please enforce that for downtown Plaza. It would be, be close to the jails and it would get more, more stimulated to help with his, with his um, citizens. Thank you, have a blessed day. Thank you. Okay, if we're ready to vote, then you can uh, call the roll. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burford. Just like to say, um, this has been a long time coming. I've made a lot of votes in my 10 and a half years, but I can't think of one that's more important than this one. When I look at how the years that people had to endure the element and have to put up with the some of the things that they've had to put up with at Cedar Grove. Uh, I uh, want to thank the manager for his leadership. And uh, Mr. Harrell, I want to thank you for your leadership. Um, and uh, I know at the end of the day, this is going to make all of us better, not only as a city, but as a region. And I think this, will be a, this is a great day and a great win for people that depend on public transportation every day. Aye. Mr. Bertagero? Paul, can I say Sure, yes, sir. I have uh, taken it upon myself to really examine this particular issue, uh, partly because uh, since I had become on since I came on council, the idea of uh, public transportation uh, is a, a duty that all of us have, and uh, it is a matter of choice. And I do use uh, uh, both the two route and the one route um, as frequently. Uh, as uh, I can tell you, I'm, hey, I'm fairly regular. Uh, I do use light rail as the connector. So in, in voting on this, I had to examine what were the criteria that uh, were needed. And uh, the main criterion was the issue of uh, being connected at the light rail stops. And some people have said, uh, and I've received emails saying, well, it's three blocks away. Well, I've looked at uh, where the proposed bus transfer facility is at uh, uh, on St. Paul. 
the proposed facility is within three blocks uh, or two blocks, depending of Civic Plaza, MacArthur Square, and Monticello Avenue. Uh, keeping in mind that if you were to park uh, with the parking that are, is around the, this new, what would be the new bus transfer facility, you can connect from there uh, uh, to Newport News and Hampton and Virginia Beach and not connecting on the street at St. Paul, which is a current uh, stop. Uh, also keeping in mind that all of those light rail stops are easily uh, are pedestrian friendly and are walkable uh, from what would be the new transfer facility to any of those stops and back and forth. Uh, I also believe that it will alleviate routes. I can tell you that the two route uh, ends at Cedar Grove, yet its true terminus should be the Port Norfolk light rail stop. It should turn around and go back down Hampton Boulevard. Uh, however, currently it goes to Cedar Grove uh, and then it comes back out and goes back <coughs> toward uh, the light rail stop, which makes no sense whatsoever. And I have a feeling we're going to be eliminating certain routes, not enhancing routes. I also think the 17 route, uh, which is currently running through downtown, can be considered uh, for elimination uh, because it basically picks up at one end of downtown and delivers to Cedar Grove, where now downtown it's set up that you can go from uh, east-west on a light rail and then walk over to the transfer facility. Uh, again, I'd mention the max ride buses that do take you to the various cities and are uh, frequent and on time. Uh, second to that, uh, meaning the light rail facilities, is what we all say is location, location, location. And uh, in looking at that, uh, this would be the beginning of what would be the St. Paul's Quadrant, which would expand to the east. Uh, it allows expansion and a gateway into downtown of the St. Paul's Quadrant. You have a firehouse that has 24-hour uh, access uh, to individuals, uh, which is, I think, allows the vagrancy at Evelyn Butts, which I'm very familiar with, which the 15 runs through it. Uh, and it allows vagrancy. And I think that the individuals who are there are not riding the bus. They're hanging out. And they're not getting on the buses. So with that being said, I think this will alleviate some of the problem that we see at Cedar Grove uh, and I think that Evelyn Butts should be examined because uh, Evelyn Butts is off of Little Creek and you can't see it from Little Creek uh, and it's off the road uh, more toward the neighborhood about a block in. Uh, I do believe that Harbor Park was an area that I had even mentioned uh, about a year ago and uh, I have to address this because even considering Harbor Co Park we would only be in the same position we were in at Cedar Grove. There is nothing there uh, most of the year. Sure, there are baseball games there at certain times, but if we go tonight, there is nothing at Harbor Park, and it will only allow what's been happening at Cedar Grove and at any other bus transfer facility to be done in the dark and not in the open. I do uh, request that staff consider uh, a, uh, and I, I believe I've been assured this, and Mr. Harrell, let me tell you, I, I will not allow this to get away from us. We must have somebody there. Uh, and I understand security, but maybe we're reaching a point that we need to discuss a transit police uh, that actually ride the buses and the light rails and connect the cities and are given certain wider jurisdictions. Uh, and that being said, I understand there is a, and I'm looking right at it, and my colleague has been kind enough to point out that there is an HRT office waiting area. Uh, but that waiting area in that office must have somebody, a supervisor, be manned. And if anything, I think the city can also consider uh, using it as an information center for people that are coming to the city uh, and make it a more of a gateway to the city than uh, perhaps we're even thinking about. And uh, that's something that we can consider. I do believe that the crossing of St. Paul Boulevard is very difficult. Uh, I understand the issues of the residents that live across the street. However, as I look at this particular facility, it is jogged down more to the north than directly across from those facilities that currently have, frankly, a McDonald's, a Popeye's uh, that are in that particular, and a gas station with a convenient mart. So there is already traffic there and foot traffic, but I do believe that uh, St. Paul crossing it myself uh, is a, can be a dangerous street for pedestrians and people need to be channeled appropriately to Wood Street and to uh, perhaps Freemason or even further down to the courthouse area uh, before they can cross over to the west 
uh, in the downtown area. I've taken a lot of time to look at this, and I know that some people may disagree with my reasoning, uh, but I do believe that uh, this is, of all, not just for financial purposes for the city, but I do believe it becomes the most appropriate because it fits all the criteria we sought. It's in the open, it's in the public, and it's close to the light rail facilities that we sought. So my vote would be aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Protegier. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? <clears throat> Just um, a few words. Uh, it was Joe Austin who sent me a email, I believe, about the gentleman that was stabbed in the neck um, at Cedar Grove, uh, which prompted me to send an email to the city manager. And although I don't, do not represent the Cedar Grove area, I took interest in it because I know how many of my students have to go through that um, to get to work or to school. Um, and I hear from my students the safety issues that uh, have occurred there. Um, we put in the budget money and asked the city manager to address this issue um, and make this happen. So we have to have confidence that the city manager has done his diligence and found the best location for us. I know that there is some opposition to this, mainly because the idea of a transportation hub center at Harbor Park but at the same time, the estimates for that came back at over $20 million uh, with the need of a parking garage. I, to be honest with you, I, I have respect for our bus riders, but we need to build schools. And I can't uh, imagine us spending money uh, on a, a, a bus station, a $20 million bus station, um, when we have schools that need to be built. Um, I think that some of the opposition is also because there is a stigma at bus stations. And why is there a stigma? Because of Cedar Grove. And I think that we have an opportunity here to show and reflect uh, a good quality transportation hub and center um, and that our citizens feel safe in riding. And uh, I, after, I didn't do as much homework as Andy on this, um, but I, I did and I, I looked at different locations and it sounds like that the city manager's office has done a great job with this. So I'm supportive of it, so I vote aye. Ms. Williams? Um, I'm going to vote for Cedar Grove. And for me, the overriding factor was simply the safety issue. Um, you know, I'm sorry, the, our downtown bus station. Cedar Grove is um, unsafe. I got the same email from Joe that you got um, about the stabbing victim, and I hear things that people say go on um, in Cedar Grove. And maybe one or two comments you could say, well, you know, maybe that person is exaggerating. But when the comments continue and the stories are the same and the issues are the same and people are afraid, um, I, I agree that, you know, it has been a long time coming and, um, you know, that we owe our bus riders um, dignity we owe them a respectable place uh, for changing in transportation. We owe them a safe place. Um, and we owe our citizens who choose, who may choose to ride the bus, the opportunity to do so and change buses in a convenient manner, but more so than anything in a safe manner. Um, some people argue the cost, and the cost really doesn't bother me. If it honestly was six or seven million dollars, um, it would be okay. But an open, lit, safe, dignified place for our citizens who ride the bus, whether it's by choice or by need, I think um, is what this new bus station in downtown Plaza um, is going to bring. And we can analyze to paralyze, but at the when it's all said and done, I think that, again, I agree with Tommy, that the manager and his staff have done their due diligence, and um, that's what we hired him for. So I vote aye. Mr. Wynn. Uh, my position on this has been clear for a while. Uh, I don't think it's the right location. Um, I do know that we have to get out of Cedar Grove. It's a horrible situation. We have to help those people, I believe. And I looked at a number of the sites, and I've met with people from HRT and the manager's office and a number of the sites that I would have preferred 
probably aren't acceptable. I do think we could go north on the other side of the fire station on Wood Street. We own the property there. We would have a, there's already a crossing there. We could channel the people across. They're not that much further from where they are. I think it works better. Uh, uh, I think we've got to do something. Uh, I know it's already been decided. Uh, it's a done deal, so it's going to happen, but I would have preferred. I think you've got this St. Paul's corridor there that's, that's in the early development stages or the thought stages. I think the traffic situation is horrible down there. <coughs> and the thought of, uh, I understand we are not going to put another signal, at least I think that's what I understand there, to get across. There are seven traffic signals now between Bramilton and, and uh, or six between Bramilton and Waterside Drive. So I prefer the other site, so I'm going to vote now. Mr. Frame? Um, just a couple of things. Um, I think it's been very well said. I appreciate the time everyone uh, has taken to examine this issue. I especially appreciate uh, the manager's uh, and his staff's due diligence. This, this location comes with his uh, strong recommendation and that of HRT as well. And I think they analyzed some 20 sites. Uh, I'm going to, you know, you know, acknowledge that there is no perfect place for a bus station, especially in a a bus transfer station, especially in a city as, as, uh, as dense as ours and as compact as our downtown is. There isn't any perfect place. They're always going to, you're going to rub up against some other use in some location. But I do think um, <clears throat> in, our, in light of our goal to have a, a location that was not only convenient to, for the riders to, in downtown, but one that also created a, a dignified situation for people to use transit, which is really a, a major goal of ours. There, there's probably not another city in the, well, there isn't another locality in the, in the Commonwealth who has pushed forward uh, as far as we have on mass transit. And I think this is just another good example of that. Um, <clears throat> I want to say something about, you know, I know the pedestrian traffic is a concern. Years ago, the, the council bought um, the downtown plaza and we cleared it and we started parking, parking on it. And Every day, every evening, parkers who park there come out of the buildings in downtown. A lot of them are employees of the MacArthur Center and walk the other direction across towards the downtown plaza to get into their cars. And um, while there are plenty of pedestrians there, we've been able to manage that. There won't be as many, actually, as many going the other way uh, and when, uh, when it's all said and done. So... Um, Having said all that, I really think the discussion has been a good, good one. Appreciate those folks that came out here to talk uh, tonight about it in favor of it. So I vote aye. Okay, thank you. Um, where are we? R twenty um, one. A resolution requesting Hampton Roads Transit to initiate in advance studies of potential options to extend light rail transit in Norfolk to connect to, Nor to Naval Station Norfolk and endorsing the continued advancement and completion of the current study of light rail transit in Virginia Beach. Just a second. Uh, Dan Montague? <coughs> uh, Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, Mr. Jones. I am in complete agreement with the study, but I don't think it does enough. As one who rides the light rail every time <coughs> in the town, I want it to, to do more than what it has been planned on you guys letting it do. We are the home of the largest naval facility in the world. We got more military around here than anywhere else that I know of. We got every branch of the military in this region. So why don't we have the transportation facilities that they need? If we're going to keep on having the military here, which I'm all for, we need to provide them with decent transportation. Not only do I want it to go to the naval base, but I want it to go through the current downtown tunnel to get it to Portsmouth so that people can go to the naval hospital and also the world's largest Navy yard. And the thing about it is, until we get a little bit futuristic in this city, we are going to be left behind like we have always have been. San Diego, Seattle, which are, are nothing compared to us, they have it. Baltimore has it doing things. It's been doing it for years. When I used to go up there to the Preakness, 
I rode the light rail all over Baltimore. We need to push light rail and make it work for the whole region. And therefore, let's get with the project instead of getting, uh, getting left behind like we usually are. And if uh, Virginia Beach keeps playing around, tell them we are the leader and it's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Alton Robinson. Good evening, uh, Mayor Frame, City Council Member, Councilman Jones. My name is Alton Robinson. My address is 735 West 35th Street. I, too, think it's a great idea that um, we voting to show our support where Virginia Beach is uh, looking to have the light rail extended to the oceanfront. And we're looking to have it extended to the uh, naval base. And I think the study will be good because um, Virginia Beach had a study and it cost $6.6 .6 million, and it was federal and state funded. And if we can get that, that's cool. You know, I look at light rail today where it was $318 million, and the city put in $53 million. You know, you kind of look at that, you'd be like, man, you put in $53 million, but you also gained $265 million. <clears throat> $65 million. That's not a bad deal. So I know that our city is looking to grow and we're looking towards the future. But I also want to remind us of another future. And I know it's kind of tough when you have to make certain decisions and you have to balance and look at light rail extension to the beach or the neighbor base. The future, our children, our schools, the future. So I just want to bring this to the attention of council when we're talking about the future. And I know it's tough because you have to deal with the light rail. We have to stay, uh, take the leadership in this region and say we're going to move forward. But we, we cannot leave behind the other future, right. which is our children. So we have to consider building our schools and investing in our children so that, you know, we won't just have a light rail without a, another portion of the future to ride the light rail. I hope that uh, y'all kind of understand what I'm saying when I talk about this leveraging of the future, because we have the light rail future, and we have our children future. And you know, we had the two cent uh, for two schools deal, and a lot of people saying, oh, well, you should have built the schools before you built the light rail. Well, we'll see. But the thing is, you guys are making tough decisions. There's only eight of you, and you're making decisions for over 230,000 people. And I know it's greatly impossible to please even 10% of the people. But I just like to say that when you do make the decisions, don't forget about our children and these school buildings that need to be need to be built. Especially over on the south side, I was at the school board supporting the south side, and they was like wanting a K through eight because they found it was going to K through five. And we're looking at money issues. Well, to be honest, I think they should get a new elementary school <coughs> and a new middle school. But hey, who am I? Just a guy. I'm not on council making the decisions you guys make. And to be honest, right now, I'm kind of glad I'm not where you guys are. <laughs> Shira Knight. Good evening again, sir. Good evening. As I say again, sir, yes, about the light rail. Light rail is very, is very uplifting to uh, Virginia and Norfolk. And um, I also like to say, um, last year, when, um, when the light rail was first introduced to downtown Norfolk, at the Christmas pageants that they had and the Christmas parade they had, the people, you should have heard their conversations about the light rail. They were so happy. I mean, they were so cheerful. It was, I mean, all the train that was going through, they was packed up. It was so packed up. They was like, wow, we got a train here, what? We never seen this in all before. And I mean, they was just so cheerful. They were smiling, they was laughing, they were <clears> talking. <throat> and I have actually rode on light rail. I have talked to some of the customers and they were so, so spunk. They were just cheerful. And I was like, 
Y'all wanted to go further? He said, yes, please. We want to go further. We don't want to just stay here. We want to share with, you know, expand it other places. And I was saying, I say, okay, then. You know, I speak my, 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 um, my voice and everything, what's my opinion. They said, please, you know, talk to, to the city council. Like, like the man said, y'all don't have everything. Money's not growing trees. You can't just pluck all the tree and whatever and say do this and do that. But I'm saying, it has really done some great things down in Norfolk. And to the point, please expand it. You know, please voice your opinion about it. And please let us know. Have a blessed day, sir. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the list of folks who are here to sign, to address the council on this issue. Paul, there. Yeah, can I please. ask um, something real quick? On line two of the resolution, um, <coughs> or section two, whereas daily ridership totals on the tide during its first year of operations have far exceeded initial projections and continue to increase, demonstrating a growing public enthusiasm and support for light rail transit as part of a balanced approach to addressing transportation needs in Norfolk and the larger Hampton Roads region. I would like to ask that we strike out the language that says a growing public enthusiasm. This was written as a factual based, and that's an opinion, um, and there's no public poll on this. We're, Paul, listen to me. There's no public, we're saying that because numbers are increasing that this means everybody's excited about it. I'm reading the whole resolution here, and that is an editorial statement. And I, I think that it doesn't fit in, in what we're trying to do here. And so I'm just asking to strike out that language, a growing public enthusiasm. It still talks about an increase in this, but it keeps the editorial part out of it. And there's been no public poll on this. Um, there's some people that- <laughs> Will that help you support it? Well, yes, it would, okay. yeah. All right, well, we'd like to get as much many votes as possible. If there's no objection to that, that's fine. All right. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. Okay, you can call the roll. Okay. Adopt the re adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt. Just for the record, <clears throat> this resolution in, in, is in no way to try to influence the vote that Virginia Beach has to make. But I think it's very important that we show our support for our friends on the, on the Virginia Beach uh, Council as well as the mayor, uh, because at the end of the day, it's truly about regionalism. And we should be working together opposed to working against each other. And I think the mayor has done a tremendous job over the years in building that relationship. And so I just think this gives us, this takes us one more step closer to continuing that relationship and truly realizing regionalism one day. So I vote aye. Mr. Protegero? Paul. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Robinson, I think that your remarks were brilliant. Uh, and the reason I say that is, and I contemplated uh, how uh, exactly what you had said and how you enter into votes uh, on counts when it comes to uh, expending funds or uh, dealing with policy issues and realizing the crisis that we have found ourselves in. Some people would call crisis, I call it a crisis when it comes to our test scores and, and some of our physical <clears throat> plants, uh, that we need to uh, uh, almost make it a point that every time we make a vote, uh, that we have to make that a concern and we have to run it in our head as to whether or not how does this vote influence our schools and our school system. And I think that anybody uh, can, running that in my own mind, and, and I mean on every vote, frankly, uh, that that is a significant matter that needs to be uh, considered because that right now is our biggest priority and we have to take it seriously. Uh, and that being said, I think we can find any number of of reasons as to why that's probably appropriate uh, to accept this vote and to uh, vote I for it. I think we consider, uh, some people would say enhanced tax bases, perhaps uh, the, the transportation even for the school children to use, their parents to use, uh, bringing more of a regional uh, emphasis uh, may affect the schools in some manner in the future. So I think that that is a brilliant way that we have to probably attack every vote. So I thank you for your comments. They were, they were most appropriate. Um, uh, that being said, I, I don't like the timing of this, and I've, I've expressed that in the informal session. I think the timing of this is, is most inappropriate uh, because it may appear that we're attempting to influence uh, Virginia Beach, and if that's the case, then I am extremely uncomfortable with the timing of this particular vote. That being said, however, 
I am not going to affect my vote as to the issue of, merely because of the issue of time. Right. I think that the vote is, uh, is frankly too critical uh, for that. And in the fact also I will say that the money has already been set aside, uh, as I understand it, approximately 1.8 million for the study. Uh, it's not new funds uh, that we have to produce. Uh, so that being said, I would uh, agree with this. However, uh, and I have uh, mentioned this uh, earlier uh, on my, uh, in my term as counsel, that uh, I think that uh, perhaps mistakes, it's hindsight's 2020, and somebody who didn't have to make the hard vote or the hard votes to bring light rail in to the city uh, can examine this uh, uh, and be the, uh, the Monday morning quarterback. And we can all look to what perhaps uh, other issues that should have been done or <coughs> been done or attempted to have been done, and I'm sure they were, but they just uh, fell on deaf ears of other cities. Uh, Seattle and those other cities have counties that surround them, counties that support them, and it makes it much easier for them to get what they want in this <coughs> center city, unlike the city of Norfolk that's surrounded by other municipal corporations, which makes our job even harder, and it makes it easier for all of those cities, uh, as Dan had explained. Uh, however, uh, I do believe that uh, uh, we must, uh, not just Virginia Beach, but Chesapeake must be involved in this discussion and uh, must be involved in an understanding of really moving their citizens through the city of Norfolk, because that's really who this is for. We are moving the citizens of two other cities through our city through a light rail system that would connect uh, Virginia Beach to the naval base. This is not necessarily for our residents, except it frees up our roads and the maintenance that would come with our roads that VDOT does not cover. If it frees up the maintenance of our roads that VDOT does not cover, then that frees up money for our schools at some point. So uh, I think that uh, in the future, if light rail is to be a reality, uh, Virginia Beach and Chesapeake, not saying anything from Portsmouth, but it's really to move the other residents through our city. Uh, must be on board and before we do anything in the future after the 1.8 million is expended and if it is uh, It does deem appropriate to connect to the naval base that all of these cities would be together To make something happen because without it Norfolk cannot afford to do it alone. We have we've done that once we can't afford to do it again uh, uh, In the economic times that we find ourselves in frankly, I think we'll find ourselves in the future So for those reasons I vote aye. Thank you Mr. Riddick <clears throat> you know, when I look at the uh, resolution that it arrived at our desk, you know, at a very uh, quick pace, but I kind of liken this to the uh, Surrey uh, coal issue. It's not our issue. As far as Virginia Beach is concerned, I uh, support uh, <coughs> light rail expansion to ODU, the naval base and the air airport. But as far as Virginia Beach is concerned, it is not our issue. It's, it's their issue. But in addition to that, one of my main reasons for not supporting this is because when we initially started down the path of light rail, uh, Virginia Beach would not even allow a study of light rail. And that insulted a lot of citizens of Norfolk uh, uh, across racial lines. But in particular, those of us who have been around the table for a minute or two know that Virginia Beach's initial uh, rebuff of uh, light rail had to do with racial issues and not wanting uh, blacks to have access to the base, I mean, excuse me, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the beach. Now, while this might seem something that's, um, that's way out of line as far as a lot of citizens are concerned, there are a lot of members of my community who were insulted and still insulted because of Virginia Beach's actions. Uh, and so for that reason, uh, I vote no. Mr. Smigel. Well, one of the things that I like about this resolution is right now it doesn't cost the citizens any money. Um, and uh, down the road, if I'm on council or whoever's on council, they'll have to make a tough decision possibly with the expansion of light rail. Um, one of the things, biggest criticisms I heard, I've heard from citizens about light rail is they're not necessarily anti-light rail. They were just anti the placement of it. Um, and one of the things that has always been discussed is why did we not run this to the military base? Why was this not? That was the whole goal was to take this off. So when you're reading this resolution, this is what this is about, is extending it there. Um, I do, I would at a future date like to discuss 
council policy, um, and I'll bring some copies that um, the former city manager gave me about policy, but we had discussed uh, at the Surrey Coal Plant vote about how resolutions <coughs> come forward, and Dr. Wibley and I were criticized about res resolutions just uh, appearing on the agenda. Um, this one appeared on the agenda, and I thought that there was an agreement on council that um, these types of issues, would we would have time to look at them understanding the timeliness of this, whether it's purpose or not, um, I do believe that talking to my constituents that there is an agreement that they would like to see light rail extended to the base. Um, I also support future success of light rail. I have my concerns about uh, the past and how this went about, but we also need to make light rail successful. We need to make it work. And part of that is um, working in partnership with our neighboring cities. And I hope that uh, you know, that we can move beyond uh, this idea that we work in silos and that we are, um, you know, a region when it comes to transportation and possibly other things. So I do vote aye. Ms. Williams? I think that the success of light rail is essential to our city. I think that um, we can't make another jurisdiction or locality do anything. But I do believe that the success of light rail, it, the expansion of light rail, is essential to our city. And I appreciate our city manager for going back over all the numbers from the original project, um, from Mr. Chiquette over at HRT, and for our new director over at HRT, Mr. Harrell. Um, but I, I, bottom line is I believe it, it's essential to the success of our city. We have to get cars off the road. The young lady um, who came and spoke talked about a future where there would not be as many cars on St. Paul's Boulevard. And um, that's definitely a future that we can see. A lot of times when we talk about parking issues, we talk about the reduction that we're already seeing in vehicles um, due to light rail and mass transit. And any city that really wants to flourish and grow has to have a mass transit system that serves its citizens and, as Andy said, um, transport citizens of other cities. Mr. Robinson is a wonderful landscaper, so I'm sure somewhere along the line he'll find us seeds to a money tree, and we'll be able to do all the things that we want to do. But until that time comes, since we already have the money for this study, I vote aye. Mr. Wynn? I'll just take one quick second. I have been, and I did ask that this resolution be brought forward. I, I tried in the spring or summer to push forward this movement, the action towards the getting to the naval station, Old Dominion. Uh, I was told we had to wait till the ridership numbers came in and had to be a, a year, which was late August. I asked again, and I guess three or four weeks ago, I, in informal session, I didn't, it wasn't a secret, I, maybe we could have gotten it a little earlier, but I think we got to look past petty things. And I know Mr. Riddick's uh, concerns are not petty, but if we're going to move ahead as a region, we've got to... Uh, you know, some of the leadership of Virginia Beach uh, was very supportive. It has been supportive of the light rail. I think it's a key to taking the, the traffic off our interstates to get in downtown, to get to the naval base. Uh, this has been funded. Uh, it's not going to cost anything. It's going to be, if, if, we, if all the stars lined up and everything worked out perfectly, we'd probably be eight or ten years before we could even think about riding on the light rail. So we have to start somewhere. We can always think of a good reason why not to push ahead. And we, many times as a city, we, we run into reasons why we can't do things just rather than reasons why we can do it. I think it's imperative that we move ahead, and I enthusiastically vote yes, or aye, or whatever it is. Mr. Frame? Yeah, and um, I want to lend my voice to those who have supported this, uh, the resolution. Um, I mean, for so many uh, reasons that the comments here at the, the table have been uh, have been terrific. Um, some have, have expressed concern, uh, rightfully so. Some have, some have, uh, you know, have wondered. I guess we should have done this sooner. We should have been in the naval base first. I, you know, it was about 25 years ago, at least, when we first started talking about this. Not to date myself, but the first line, the one that we originally tried to be a part of 
came from the oceanfront at the beach and sort of, and then took a right at Newtown Road and went to the naval base. That was the, the we actually said, okay, the spur will be to downtown Norfolk to our friends at the beach if they will, would support this. I mean that because when you look at p the desire lines and the out at the transportation planning organization, they have these computerized models that, you know, that so many people are like one red dot. And I mean, once you start moving to the naval base, the the whole thing turns red. I mean, it just, I mean, it just explodes. It just, uh, where everybody's really trying to get to, a lot of people are trying to get to the naval base. They're trying to get to downtown. Um, but the naval base, and of course, you know, the defense dollar now is 45, 46 percent of our, of our uh, economy. It's more today than it was even when we were considering it back then. So um, in a perfect world, the first place you would have built this thing literally is to the naval base. And then maybe try to, to try the, to tie the ocean front into the, uh, in, into downtown. So, but we couldn't get that support. Um, and then we finally, since, you know, became apparent after a length of time that the beach was not prepared to move as quickly as we were, they didn't have the appetite for us. We said, well, let's see if we can get this one spur from Newtown Road into downtown and maybe we can bring other people along with us. And that's, that is really in the way it's now developing. Uh, and the, the question about the enthusiasm for the light rail, since people came back from vacation and since, uh, you know, the, the students are back at Norfolk State and at Old Dominion and at um, TCC. The ridership is, since I think September 4th, is just, it's remarkable to see the numbers. We're probably averaging 64, 6,500 a day right now during the work day. And we were like, you know, everybody knows we were hoping to get 2,900. It's like 6,500 a day. I think that would be a good piece of information, to, Mr. Manager, really to calculate from the, what is that, Labor Day, right after Labor Day, what the what the work work weekdays what the average is now by the end of October, that would be. Uh, but anyway, I, as people are becoming more familiar with it, as they're using it, they're liking it more, and they're telling their friends, and more people are riding it. Um, there are about a hundred thousand people who actually come into Norfolk every day to to work and then go home in the evening. And um, while I know that's a somewhat of a double-edged sword. Um, what we all ought to be concerned about is making sure that people can get to their jobs in the city. Because if, if employers can't get their workforce here, my guess is the <coughs> employers will go to where the workforce can reach them. And they, they don't have to be in Downtown. They don't have to be in Norfolk. They can be in Isle of Wight if their workforce can get to them there. So I want to get the people to the jobs or the jobs will go to where the people are. And light rail is one way to do it. Certainly out to the naval base mm -hmm. is the best thing that could happen to all of us, uh, to the light rail system, and of course, you know, as we and to moved uh, all the way to the oceanfront at the beach and then into Chesapeake. Actually, and, I'm, and I'll be quiet here in a second, but the first, the first goal of light rail was to start at, uh, in Williamsburg and come down the CSX corridor. And then in the old uh, third crossing, the planning, there was a $600 million tube in there to go under the harbor. You could engineer light rail. You couldn't do heavy rail, a high speed rail under the harbor because the slopes don't work and the, and the approaches and all of that have to, you have to start too far back. But you actually could get light rail under the harbor. Then it would pop up right there next to the naval base and people from the peninsula could go to work at the naval base. They could go to NIT. They could go down to Old Dominion or they could come out around to the beach or then into downtown Norfolk. The idea was you would come from Williamsburg down the CSX corridor under the harbor, come up in Norfolk, and eventually go to Virginia Beach. And you can do that. It's not, you know, other communities do that. Somebody said that a moment ago. Other people dream that big, and they do things if they work regionally. Um, Portland and, and other communities. So someday somebody will get us there. But this is the one step to, to get us out to the naval base. And so I appreciate everybody's support for this. And I understand Mr. Riddick's issues as well. I was there at the moment, too. So. I vote aye. Thank you. Okay. All right, what's next? R22, Mr. R22. President. Thanks. Which is an ordinance to amend and reordain sections 27-6 and 8 of the Norfolk City Code so as to provide for one notice of violation and notice of abatement per growing season for high weeds, grass, and vegetation and to increase the administrative fee for nuisance abatement to $150. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Thank you, Mr. Manager, for this, this ordinance. 
Aye. Mr. Protegerio? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, then um, we will conclude the formal session of the meeting.